for my brothers never had an ear to hear me. These the bricks for our sisters help us build them. If I could be a black fly on the wall, I can hear and see it all and have the mind of a god. Black, 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 black. Fly, 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 fly. Black, black, black. Seven Twelve Vodka, distilled only once from Blue Ridge Mountain water, alkaline and gluten free. Seven Twelve Vodka is perfect for sipping or mixing when you want to enjoy the finer things in life. Serve up Seven Twelve Vodka and reflect with us on the happenings that have made you who you are. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Black Fly on Your Wall. I am your host, Jessie O'Creasy, and um, before we get started, before I let my lovely guests introduce themselves, um, I would like to let you know that 712 Vodka has sponsored this episode. Um, the major difference with 712 Vodka is they distill their vodka at a higher pH, so it has a distinctive taste, um, a refined finish. And I think it's important because we're about to have a refined conversation. Um, I will let my hosts introduce themselves, my guests introduce themselves. These ladies are heavy hitters. I am honored to be sitting at the table with you guys. And so I'll let um, Yazi start. Hi, my name is um, Yozi Yo. I am an inspirational blogger. I also am a social media strategist, and um, I'm the director of marketing and communications for Girl Scouts, North Carolina Coastal Pines. I also do freelance social media and marketing work for um, small businesses. I do, have a, I do have a devotional, Girl You Got This, it's on Amazon, and I am currently working on my second devotional. Nice, 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 nice. Hello, everyone. My name is Lexis Wilson. I'm a news personality. I'm also a content creator. I was formerly with Fox 46 Charlotte. They are now Queen City News in Charlotte, North Carolina. I'm currently now a reporter. That's the short, short term um, for American Airlines in Charlotte as well with the subsidiary Piedmont Airlines. I'm also a part of a podcast, iconic podcast, Iconic Charlotte. Um, so go ahead and check us out. But I'm glad to be here with all of you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. What's up, y'all? Cache, everyday Cache on socials. Uh, by trade, I'm an instructional designer and content developer. And on the side, I, you know, get all of my creativity out as a brand manager for a podcast, or ra rather for a YouTube channel, um, The Hunt Family Farm. I'm an editor to Tech Me Out's YouTube channel. And of course, I create my own content for everyday Cache around plus size fashion and sneakers. Thank you for having me. Yes, ma'am. See what I was talking about, y'all? <laughs> so the title of this week's episode is what should you bring to the table? Why is that such a controversial question to ask somebody? You know what? I think it is because I feel like people get into relationships, not just like, you know, you my girlfriend, you my boyfriend, but like business relationships and they get in it with the wrong people or they mm -hmm. have assumptions. They may assume that, you know, Jessica may do X, Y, and Z, but really her strengths are, you know, A, B, and C, right? And so I think, Having those honest conversations up front, it leads you down for success in the long road. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that's the main reason to have right. that conversation because you have your expectations of me, I have my expectations of you, and you might have thought your job was to do something else and vice versa. So we have the conversation. What should you? What can you bring to the table so that we can um, hone in on what we're going to do and so we can make it more effective? Why do you guys think that's such a controversial question to ask? What should you bring to the table? See, I feel like the biggest misconception is people's mindsets are automatically geared towards finances and what your mm, social status right. is when it comes to what do you bring to the table. And that is just a small spectrum when you look at the bigger picture. It is way more than that. But for whatever reason, our current generation, that's the biggest, it's as if those two things are the biggest things that matter and they're not. Because yeah. if you don't have stability, you don't have personality, all these other things are what's going to get skills. you in the door in the first place. Because right. mm -hmm. whether it's in a relationship or a business mindset, the first thing I'm not talking about is what's in your bank account. That's yeah. irrelevant. Right. I'm going based off of first personality. What, what are you bringing to the table? Who are you? What is mm -hmm. your elevator pitch? Absolutely. 
I mean, you said it, right? Our generation, we're doing a lot of things a lot differently, right? Millennials, Gen Z, we're shaking up the way that I think relationships in general typically look. Um, so that conversation is so controversial because people are kind of trained, I think, to believe the things that we've been taught, especially in, you know, as millennials, the things that we've been taught, the things that uh, our parents, the people that, you know, love us and that we love have told us you need to, you know, be or who you need to act like um, when you get into these particular relationships. And so I think we're retraining in our mind to think differently about, you know, new perspectives and new ways of doing things. So that conversation around, you know, what are you bringing to the table? I think it's definitely necessary and totally beneficial. Yeah, I think the reason why it's gotten so negative, like, kind of points more towards relationship, like, you know, boyfriend, girlfriend, or partner, partner, mm -hmm. things like that. But honestly... If my brother, when he was dating, because he is married now, but when he was dating, I'm like, well, what does she do? What does she bring to the table? Because if you are dating somebody that doesn't bring something to the table, I'm looking at you a little sideways. Like, come on, like, we have to elevate. We have to work. So it is funny that, like, in that realm, that's where it gets the most negative uh, connotation. But you know what? What's um, one of the most important things for me about bringing to the table is your mindset. Yes. Because I feel like, you know, we get in relationships with people, business partnerships, even your friendships. And mm -hmm. it's like, girl, our mindset is not even the same. Like we, we, the same. we are not we in alignment. And I think that is so important because you get involved with people that you're not in alignment with. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that takes you away from doing what you're really supposed to be doing. So right. I think that mindset for me is how you, you know, just how you view the world, how you like your morals, your principles. I think to me that that's the most important question on for that. Absolutely. Absolutely. And you got to have a purpose. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Like, I feel like that is something that is lacking right now is are you intentional in what you're doing right now? Or are you doing mm -hmm. it just because? Whether that's dating, starting a new business, uh, a new friendship, it has to be a purpose. There has to be an end goal. It can't be a I'm in the moment just having fun type right. of situation. So if you're not dating with a purpose, for example, if I know I want marriage and the yeah. man that I'm dating wants marriage, but you out here playing games, sir. Then what are we doing? Like, th th we got to get to the end game. But that's why you ask, what do you bring to the table? Mm -hmm. Because if he's bringing to the table, I'm having fun. And you bring it to the table, I'm about marriage. Then y'all don't even have to go down that path. Exactly. Feelings get involved. Uh, finances and things mix. It's like, okay, we're, um, this is your table over here. This is my table over here. Mm -hmm. And we got we to gotta part ways. And so you already are, um, you Feelings are getting involved. Mm -hmm. um, and so you you get to those conclusions way faster when you have the conversation up front. What are you bringing to the table? Prolonging Save yourself the situation. Some time. That's it. Mm -hmm. Prolonging it because you, you don't have your next. If we really going to talk about it. Oop. You're prolonging the situation yeah. because you're not prepared to be alone. Oop. I think that's a lot of pressure though, to put on, um, you know, just in, in my thinking or framing of the question, what do you bring to the table? That's a little different than what do I want, mm -hmm. right, out of a relationship and whatever the relationship is that I'm jumping into, whether familial or romantic. Um, so I think those are two different conversations. You know, what I come prepared with to offer a relationship is different than what I want long, long term. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, and so I may jump into, you know, a, a relationship uh, casually, right, friendships, mm -hmm. right? And, mm -hmm. and we don't often have the conversation with our friends. What do you, what you bring to the table, sis? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. not exactly. But you also just say it kind differently, of, though. Yeah. We do. Like, I feel like there's different ways to say, what do you bring to the table? So if it is so controversial to say it that way, um, you know, what type of things do you like? What do you? What are your goals and aspirations? I feel like that's a way to sit down and say, what are we bringing to the table? And mm -hmm. I'm starting to have more of those conversations with my friendships. Because, mm -hmm. you know, as I'm getting older, I'm thinking, you know, I want my life purpose like you just mentioned mm -hmm. and so what are we doing are we in alignment like are we not and I really think that's important especially as you get older you know because sometimes you'll have a friend y'all been friends since y'all like 10 years old right yeah but then it's like is that friendship really so valuable you, right. and mm -hmm. like in healthy this, for you stage, at this yeah. stage of your life and I think that that's important 100%. yeah I agree with that I think we put so much emphasis on um relationship romantic relationship and less yes. emphasis on mm -hmm. friendships right to where to your point you know you can be friends with somebody since they're 10 but y'all taking different paths mm -hmm. and you're still trying to you're trying to find your way back to each other but you're missing each other because what you what your goals and aspirations what your morals and values are have changed from when you were 10 year olds hopefully mm -hmm. to when now as an adult mm -hmm. we that's have fine. to stop feeling like it is fine it is relationships fine. have to be forced because of longevity Ooh, right longevity right. is irrelevant when it comes to the mindset yeah. because if we're not on the same page if we're not equally yoked 
then our time with each other, our purpose has been served already. Yeah. Whatever lesson that I was supposed to learn from you, I've learned. Yeah. And now it's time to move on. And that's okay. That is okay, that's okay for it to be seasonal. Mm -hmm. um, everybody isn't supposed to go with you to every point in life. Mm -hmm. And also, plenty of times somebody can circle around. But what y'all did was force each other. Yep. You mm -hmm. forced the relationship. Then you forced the hurt. Then you right. forced the pain. And so what could have came back around might not be able to do it because now we have this extra layer of now we got to get over what we just did to each other, mm -hmm. how we just hurt each other. Mm -hmm. But then that comes from people having to be okay with letting go, Ugh. right? And it doesn't mean if I let you go that we're not cool anymore. Yeah, mm -hmm. that's, right? a, that's it does, such It an doesn't mean point. that we're not friends anymore. It just means we're just not on the same track right now. Mm -hmm. You know, it doesn't mean I'm going to throw shade or I'm not going to like you or I'm not going to come to your event and support. It just means at this moment, we're not where we used to be mm -hmm. and that's okay that mm -hmm. is okay that mm -hmm. is okay so now that i think everybody here is okay with the question <laughs> what do you bring to the table professionally personally like what is something that you bring to the table that you feel like is an asset i think for me what i bring to the table is is that i'm that person i'm Ooh. that friend right like or i'm that whatever it is i need to be i'm that partner yeah so if I'm in a relationship with you or if I'm in a friendship with you, and I think most of you probably know this about me, I'm your biggest cheerleader. Mm. Whatever it is that you want to do, That's I'm so down important. to do. If I need to get, you know, like move tables and chairs to help your event happen or, you know, if I need to show up just so that you can have an extra person in the stands, I am there. Whatever your vision becomes my vision. Yeah. It becomes my passion. And I think that's one of the things that we miss because sometimes mm -hmm. it's like we're so competitive and it doesn't have to be that way. So, and I think a lot of my friends, they always, my girlfriends always call me like their biggest, I'm their hype woman or something. Yeah. And so I think for me, that's an asset that I have. And that's something that, you know, I pray that I never lose because I choose value in, you know, helping people like, especially the people that are close to me, like yeah. achieve their dreams, their goals, their passions, whatever their, whatever their hope is, it's like, it becomes my hope for you like your prayers start to become my mm. prayers and I think for me um you know minus you know all the great assets that I do have yeah. that's one of the things is like you can, you don't really find that, that in many people I love that so, I love that I love yeah. that and I've experienced that I think um we we may know of each other right mm -hmm. but one thing that I said when we walked in here it was edification it was mm -hmm. go girl we back there taking pictures and like the guys like looking back <laughs> <laughs> What's going on? Because we're sitting there, we're we're hyping each other up, and it's just so 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 important with relationship with women. Um, even I want to get into that conversation really bad, but like, what do you bring to the table professionally, personally? What do you bring? To the so table? the biggest thing that I bring bring to the table professionally and personally is my relationship with God. I feel like a lot of people forget God is first, mm -hmm. and in order to get the things that you want, you have to have a relationship with God, and I am very big on that. Like. People have forgotten that we've gotten away from prayer. Mm. We are a nation under mm. God, and we've gotten away from that. So it's a lot of turmoil and things that are going on right now that people don't understand. So I hold that as a top priority and as a privilege to say, I'm a Christian, and I love God. I, I want to pray for you. I want to give yeah. you things that you may not have been able to experience in a relationship, yeah. business or personal. A lot of people undermine the power of God mm, mm. and there are doors mm. that God can open you you haven't even walked foot in a cer certain door but your name is echoing and you don't even understand why yeah. and I'm very big on that because a lot of things that I have accomplished were not because I'm self-made yeah they were because I can only say God did it yeah mm -hmm. I have no Ooh. explanation there are a lot of things we were, you've accomplished X, Y, Z. But God. I don't even know. <laughs> right. God. God so God being able to have that spiritual tie yeah. with you is eye-opening that I know is something that is very key mm -hmm. to bring to the table right now. So absolutely, my relationship with God. I love that. Because once I pray for you, That's it's, it. it's, it's, it's done. a done deal. It's a done it's deal. Okay. That's In Jesus' name, it's a wrap. Mm -hmm. Amen. Uh, yeah, so I think I'm both a, a sounding and a speaking board, which I, you probably have never heard before. But in my relationships, um, you know, I find myself often being the ear to um, and in my mind at the same time strategizing how I can help as an extrinsically motivated person. Uh, the people that I love do more. I think I, I feel like I'm the Rachel Rogers of, of my relationship. She's the author of um, We Should All Be Millionaires. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and as somebody who, you know, enjoys um, uh, ambition, not only, you know, 
am I ambitious, but I enjoy the, the thought of continually learning, continually pressing the bounds on who I am as a person. I want that as well for all of the people that, um, that I love, right? Um, and so I find myself really being the strategist behind a lot of uh, my, my friends, my family, uh, my romantic partners' dreams and what they wish to do, um, all the while doing it myself. So yeah. I think, you know, I get the good practice in, in being the example, but certainly I love being both the sounding and the speaking board mm -hmm. for yeah. uh, those folks. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, good. I think those are all important. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I said yeah. that's good. Yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah I think that's, like that. that's all important. Mm -hmm. I think for me, it's like my attention to detail. Mm -hmm. And I think that's like a friendship and in business thing. Like, I'm definitely the friend that um, can feel your energy. Like, if something is off, I'm like, well, what's wrong? Mm -hmm. You know, um, I'm the friend that remembers the birthdays. I'm the friend that gets like a special <laughs> gift. Like, this is not just a gift for everybody. Like, this is a gift that you mm -hmm. know is because mm -hmm. I know you, mm -hmm. you know? And then the same way in here with Black Fly being the creative director just made sense because it's like there is a overall um, picture for Black Fly on the wall. But for me, it's like there's little details that's going to get us there. Right. And so if it's the guests that we invite on the show, if it's the set design and things like that, if it's we got to turn the cup a little bit so you can see the Black Fly symbol, it's like, I feel like all those things are so important and to feel seen, to be seen. Um, I feel like it's just so important in friendship, relationship, business. You know, you can bring something out of somebody by right. like them mm -hmm. feeling seen, mm -hmm. them feeling safe and them feeling like they are valuable in the space that they're in. 100%. The little things matter. Oh, absolutely. Mm -hmm. The little things matter. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, so back to what I, um, you kind of started up for me, stirred up for me. <laughs> um, how important is it to collaborate with other women? I feel like it's so important. And that's why I, and all of my girlfriends would tell you this, like I am everybody's biggest cheerleader. Like I may not even know you. Like I was just telling Lex, I was like, oh my God, girl, I'm coming to Charlotte. We're going to hang out. Let me know what you got going on because that's okay, just who me. I am. Yeah, we got going to on the couch right <laughs> And I feel like because, and maybe because my mom was that for me, mm -hmm. right? And my sister is that for me. Let me tell you, my mom and my sister, nobody's cheering louder for me than them, mm -hmm. right? And I think coming from that, it just made me become it's that, natural. right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And so, um, and I just think we don't do that enough as women. And it's like, we don't have to be in competition. Everybody have their own lane. And mm -hmm. I always tell Absolutely. people, listen, I'm in competition with no one. Mm -hmm. Absolutely mm -hmm. not. And it's not because I'm arrogant. It's not because I think, you know, I'm better than anybody else. It's because I know that the path that the Lord has set for me, nobody else can walk. Mm -hmm. And so I truly believe that if we all, like women just walked with that, that we would be okay with we would cheering Jessica on <laughs> exactly. or, you know, cheering Cache on. Like, it yeah. would be natural. And I think, you know, and another thing for me is a lot of my coworkers say this about me. They're like, you always compliment. And I'm like, because you never know what somebody is going through, especially yeah. women, yeah. especially today's women, especially mm -hmm. our black and brown women. If you're walking in a room and I like your lipstick, I'm going to tell you, I'm not mm -hmm. going to be like, well, where'd she get that from? I'm like, no, girl, that's popping. Mm -hmm. Like, I love it. You know, because you just never know. That could have took somebody from suicidal mm -hmm. to something just like, oh, that's my God, it. like, mm -hmm. I, then I feel better part. about myself. Sometimes it's a switch and mm -hmm. you have no idea. You so have no idea. I think it's very important because you just don't know what another woman is going through. And I think women, we, we relate so much more than not. And we forget that. Mm -hmm. That's so, a good point. That's a yeah. good point. I think um, at one point, society, what pitted us against each other. Mm -hmm. You know, it's every woman for herself. Right. And I feel like at one point in time, we gate kept a lot of information, like our feminine health, mm -hmm. um, the signs of depression, which are different in black women than Absolutely. they are in other people. Mm -hmm. We're very high functioning, depressed people. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like, you know, one of the things that I love about social media was the freedom to speak mm -hmm. and to talk. And so I was like, wait a minute, you going through... Hold on, you got yep. that? Hold on. Like, yeah. oh, and so I feel like, and women are are the multipliers, right? Mm -hmm. Whatever you give us, we give back to you. Mm -hmm. And so Tenfold. all mm -hmm. four of us multiplying mm -hmm. that information, that 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 product, that that collaboration is going to reach so much more people in front of us but also behind us mm -hmm. right. whoever is coming behind us is going to benefit so much more from us collaborating. Mm -hmm. You said one of the key things, which was gatekeeping. Mm -hmm. The mindset is we're in this race, but the race is against each other. And it's mm -hmm. not. It's not. Right. It's not. We are stronger together. So if I go and open up a store, 
my girls should be the num- number one sellers helping me sell my Absolutely. product. Right. Because when we hone in together, we Without are unstoppable. For mm-hmm. We are unstoppable yeah. together. Yeah. yeah. It doesn't matter how many lash businesses there are. It doesn't matter how many people do hair. Nobody's going to do hair the way you do it. Mm-hmm. Nobody's going to sell fits and, and step miss put it on over here the way you going to do it. Okay. So it's it. like when we collaborate that uh, that brings more opportunities not just for our business and for our group of friends but to our community Mm -hmm. that opens up the door for all of us Mm -hmm. once one of us makes it we all make it i feel like that's the biggest step that we i wholeheartedly agree with you once one of us make it if uh, one win in your black household Mm -hmm. is a win in my black household it doesn't matter what it was because that that Mm -hmm. shows Mm -hmm. me that shows my children that shows Mm -hmm. my children children it can be done whereas you well i'm medicine you're PR. So whereas my kids might not have have identified with that, but they see you win. Mm-hmm. I'm going to big you up. I'm going to say, hey, look at this. Mm-hmm. Look at this black woman. Look mm-hmm. what she did. So it's like, oh, I do identify with that. So because a, a lot of the times we don't see it ourselves in some of these spaces Mm -hmm. so it's like I don't know if I can do it Mm -hmm. I was one of two black people in my program and it was so hard and I know this wasn't intentional because of who ran the program but I got into a program um we have to do clinicals Mm -hmm. and it was with everybody and it was black Mm -hmm. my confidence level shot through the roof like at one point I was like how did I even get into this program Mm -hmm. you know and I they, I mean, black physical therapists, black occupational therapists, the nursing director, the the administrator of the building. Everybody was black. Do you know how much confidence I walked yeah. out of that building with? Like, if they can do it, how, how mm-hmm. can I do it? You know? Mm-hmm. What do you think? What do you have to add, Kishore? Yeah. Um, so I think, you know, collaboration, um, especially among black women, is mm-hmm. so incredibly important um, because it it is the expectation that we are supposed to, you know, be super women, right? Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and sometimes that is very true, and we don't need a, a lot to, you know, make that happen. There are other times where, to your point, right, um, we are able to show that, and that may not be, you know, deep down inside exactly what we're going through or indicative mm-hmm. of how we're feeling, um, but there are so few in comparatively so few resources for black women um, and women in general, right, uh, but especially black women um, when it comes to in whatever regard being successful. Um, so collaboration ensures that, you know, if I've got resources over here and you all have, you know, other resources over there, they're, they're to your point, right? Mm-hmm. Our success is going to be limitless. Um, I think, though, it, it, you know, admittedly, right, where that's the dream and the goal and, you know, collaboration is um, uh, is the pinnacle. Mm-hmm. Um, sometimes it's not as easy to, you know, to right. make that happen. I agree. Um, and so I love that, you know, uh, yo, you shared um, your methods of simply complimenting somebody, right? Mm-hmm. Something as small as I'm um, just walking in and, you know, helping to, to brighten somebody else's day yeah. um, can really be something. That, and I'm over here like, dang, I, you know, I didn't think about that, right? <laughs> um, that, that you can add just into mm-hmm. your, uh, you know, your habit. Mm -hmm. um, that can really change and shape the, the success of another black woman. Southern 12 Vodka, distilled only once from Blue Ridge Mountain Water. Alkaline and gluten-free, Southern 12 Vodka is perfect for sipping or mixing when you want to enjoy the finer things in life. Serve up 712 Vodka and reflect with us on the happenings that have made you who you are. Because let's be honest, um, to your point, like, yeah, we're all in alignment with the fact that black women should collaborate Mm -hmm. with each other. But I know in my experiences coming up, um, you know, I reached out to black women to work with and it wasn't you know, favorable. It was Mm -hmm. gate kept. It Mm -hmm. was, you know, I'm not going to give you the sauce. I'm not going to give you the recipe. I'm not going to help you to get where you are. But then you come around and now that I have grown a little bit, now those same people I was reaching out to are reaching out back to me. (laughs) And see, you know what? And so one thing that I've learned is that people are just going to be people. And some people are just not going to be hip to, you know, trying to change the culture. Mm-hmm. And so I've had that happen to me. And I, you know what? I still, I still gave them kindness. I still supported them because at the end of the day, like we're all going to win mm-hmm. at some point in our lives. Grace. Right. And so, yeah, Absolutely. grace is, grace is yeah. really big. And then like, and I always say, you know what? That sister may not help me, but there's another sister out there that will. And that's one of the reasons why, like um, I mentioned that I work for Girl Scouts and 
I didn't realize how important my role was until we went to, we did like women's empowerment. You know, we all know here, women's mm -hmm. empowerment is like one of the huge is <laughs> like black and brown conferences for women, right? Mm -hmm. And so I had so many black girls were like, oh my God, you're a black girl scout. You, they're, they're black girls, they're black girls on the marketing. Like as I had a banner with like, you know, just all different types. Yeah. And they were just kind of, they were so shocked. And in that moment, I said, dang, girl, this is why you got, this is why you got to keep pushing. This is why <laughs> yeah. you got to keep doing what you're Absolutely. doing because yeah. Yeah. it's like, they may not, they may not get that from somewhere else. Yeah. And so just because, you know, this sister over here, this sister over here don't want to help you, just know that it's somebody or else out not, there who will. Or may not be in the space Or may not be in the space, right? right. And that's where I think yeah. grace kicks in. Yeah. Um, because that, that sauce or that recipe that, you know, a black woman may not have been in the space to provide you at that moment didn't mean, right, to mm -hmm. Lexus's point, didn't mean that God wasn't going to provide you the recipe mm -hmm. or the sauce. Because he just wasn't going to come from them. Absolutely. Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? And it's, Absolutely. you know, it'll yeah. be a perfect meal, right? And I mean, I like what you said like it didn't change who you were as a yeah. person mm -hmm. and it, I don't feel like it changed who I was as a person yeah. it was like for me something like that is motivational all right bet so now I'm gonna get to the point yep. where you have no choice but to see me mm -hmm. right right like you have no choice but to right. see me I'm going to be in your face I'm gonna work twice as hard and I will I know how this feels and I will never put mm -hmm. anybody else right. in that situation again even if I don't personally know if I can't personally help you I am going to point you in the direction of mm -hmm. somebody that can right mm -hmm. A lot of times it'll be those same people that I wouldn't necessarily say a roadblock, mm -hmm. but those same people that you reached out for help are going to circle back and ask you how you got to where you did. Right. And I'm going to tell them. Yep. Yeah. Because, yes, there is a recipe. There is a sauce. But your sauce will never be my yep. sauce and vice versa. Wherever what was made for me, what was mm -hmm. ordained for me, mm -hmm. it doesn't matter what you do. The, even you telling me no, that wasn't a deterrent. That doesn't mean I'm not going to get where I'm going to mm -hmm. go. That just means that I got to find another avenue. But yep. you, you will never stop me from getting to where Absolutely. I need to be. Mm -hmm. No matter what. No does what. not mean no. No right. does no not mean no. Not right now. Not right, right now. No <laughs> right means find another yeah. way yeah. no means find another way so okay how important is it then for men to have women on their team you know what i think it's very important for men to have women on their team because sometimes the opposite sex gives a different perspective mm -hmm. and a lot of times um the opposite sex can also have a certain type of discernment that you may not have. Mm -hmm. And so I, I do have like some guys that I call my brothers and it's like, they just call me for like the weirdest things, right? Mm -hmm. And and I'm like, well, why do y'all call me for stuff? And they're like, because you're really in tune spiritually. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, who, me? Like, cause you know, I be, you know, you know. <laughs> you be living in the Lord, world? I'm trying, right? <laughs> like, I'm trying, Lord. But I'm like, really me? They be like, yeah. And so, you know, and I think sometimes just having that different, um, and even me, because like I consult with guys about certain things too, mm -hmm. and I'm like, especially if I'm I'm going somewhere and I gotta wear something, I may be like, you know, and it depends on what the audience is. I may not want to be too sexy, or mm -hmm. or I may not want to, or I'm not really showing too. So it just mm -hmm. it just depends, and I think it's good to have the opposite sex, especially for men, because it's like, you know, we're naturally like prayer warriors. And I'm not saying that men aren't, right? Mm -hmm, yeah. But listen, I got a prayer closet. I'd okay. be going to war. So if you need a prayer <laughs> before the end of the day, okay, let me know. Because I put me on the list. Put me on the list. list. to me, right? <laughs> but, you know, like, we pray different. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? We seek our families different. Yeah. We are we are covering, like, men are the protectors and the providers, but we are covering yeah. the world and our friends and our relationships in a different way on a whole nother level. Absolutely. And I think to have somebody like that on your team, it just means the world. Like, it takes it to a different level. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. whether it is y'all are in a relationship, y'all are co-parenting or whatever, you know, or, you know, your friendships, like cover your other sex friends, like mm -hmm. cover them. Yeah. And I'm really big on that yeah. because you just, especially like our men, our men be black, especially our black and brown men, mm -hmm. they are fighting things that we would never even, mm -hmm. couldn't even imagine what they're fighting. Because mm -hmm. I, I mean, I have a black son, so mm -hmm. I'm just like, I don't even know, like, you know, I just, I, I'm not him. I'm yeah, not a man, so yeah. I don't know what he's going to go through. But to cover him in prayer in a different way, mm -hmm. like, you you just can't, it's, it's something different. Like, I get emotional talking about it sometimes because yeah. I never forget this lady told me. She said, you have the power to cover your son. And I was married at the time when she said this. She said, mm -hmm. your son and your husband, like, nobody else is going to be able to. She said, you'll be able to speak in a different language mm -hmm. that will be able to hinder things from happening to mm -hmm. them. And I feel like as important as women, like, that's our job. 
Yeah. Right? Because they don't know. They don't see sometimes. Because men agree. be focused on, you know, they be mm-hmm. trying to, they be getting it, trying to win. And that's good. Are you in my head? Yeah. Because, like, I want to <laughs> yeah. ask these questions. And, like, I want to get to everybody. But now yeah. you don't want to ask this no, question. Go ahead. But, like, go no, ahead. I, yeah. I agree. Like, I definitely want to get back to um, what you said. Mm-hmm. But, um, yeah. So, how important is it for men to have women on their team? And not just business wise, but personally. It's vital. Yes. It's vital. Women, we are naturally nurturers. Mm-hmm. We want to love. We want to protect as well, but in a soft way. Yeah, it's exactly. in a different manner. It is. So it's different when your man, whether in a relationship, business-wise, friendship, can come to you in confidence and take down that, I got to be top dog. I got to be the boss mm-hmm. when I'm outside of these four walls mm-hmm. or over this cell phone. It is something different that women can provide, especially when a man is transitioning from the household aspect, from your mother. You may not feel necessarily comfortable to share certain things with your mother. Mm. A woman, whether relationship-wise or whatever the spectrum is, there are certain things that we can give you. Mm -hmm. We can open you up to. Explore those emotions. Yeah. I don't know what it is, but it's different for a man to want to explore those feelings with another man because you're taught at a young age, you can't cry. Yeah. You can't be open. You can't be emotional. With a woman, we're soft. We're inviting. I want you to do that. Mm -hmm. This is a safe space. Mm -hmm. So especially when it comes to emotions, I feel like that is something that is not talked about enough. That's right. Men true. need that. That's very Men true. go through a lot, especially as the leader, yeah. as the provider. Mm-hmm. They as need someone protector. to come to where, you know what, I need you. Yeah. And that's okay to say. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to embrace that in you. Yeah, I, I love how you needed. said protected in mm-hmm. a different way mm-hmm. because, yes, they are the protector. Thank you, men. But, mm-hmm. like, we protect them in a way... Oftentimes, until they find that right woman, they didn't even know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They didn't even know that way that they needed that protection. Mm-hmm. So I love how you said that. Yeah. I really yeah. do. That mm-hmm. protection may not be tangible. You know, I think when we when we think about uh, men having um, either women or those who don't conform to the gender binary on mm-hmm. their teams, mm-hmm. like it's it stretches masculinity in a way. Mm-hmm. Like we're we're talking very specifically about the subset of of attributes that maybe a man or a woman has. Mm-hmm. And I have to admit that my femininity doesn't always show up as soft. Mm-hmm. 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 Right. Mm-hmm. Or in the traditional ways that like we understand women mm-hmm. or that even we aspire to be as women. There are mm-hmm. some times where I'm like, damn, you need to kind of like soften it up a little bit. Like, <laughs> you know, take it down a smidge. Mm-hmm. But um, but I think in in um, just having a cross you know, the identity scale, mm-hmm. right? Um, other people on your team, it helps you to shift your own identity, right? right? And how you show up, not merely as a person in, in your relationships, but to your point, um, in, you know, your professional realms, there are things that others may not think about, right? Mm-hmm. So, like, men, they're going to let that eyelash hang because they don't wear eyelashes, right? Yeah, when, right, right. when you're recording a podcast, <laughs> right? <laughs> or they're going to get that picture. They're terrible. And, I'm so you know, happy you guys are here. <laughs> we got you, girl. We're going to make sure you on 10 as okay. always. A hundred, a hundred. But, yes, but yeah, period. I think just that very perspective here. definitely <laughs> helps to stretch um, not only, you know, the, the thought in how to do something or how to achieve something, but also who a person is within themselves. Yeah. Um, you know, we, we think we may be nurturers, right? Right. But um, in a man working with us, that may help him to become more of a nurturer. Mm-hmm. Right. Um, and again, stretch that masculinity in ways that we may not have originally right, considered. Right. Mm-hmm. And have them tap, tap into their feminine energy because we all have masculine and feminine mm-hmm. energy yep. inside of us. And then sometimes society will help you to depress or suppress mm-hmm. the other one. Yeah. Whereas they really are a yin and a yang. They work together. Right. You need both or you're going to be off balance. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to say... Me joining Black Fly on the Wall as the first woman, um, like, it elevated this company within a year. Mm -hmm. Um, I think, one, like, me being here, me, the things that I did, but two, it also, I feel like it gave all the men here chances to get things off of their minds to where like, okay, just scale can worry about that. Just scale is good at worrying about that. That is, that is her mm-hmm. lane. That is a woman's lane to where, like I said, make sure the cups are in a certain way, make sure mm-hmm. the set looks in the way. So that freed their mind up to work on other things. So mm-hmm. now we have um, members that are growing in the photography and the videography lane that we have. Um, like Aaron has, I don't, applied to 7 million different grants and stuff for us because like there's just aspects of this that he that I told him that he doesn't have to think about and that he we built that trust 
And right. so he was able to free his mind. And so I mm-hmm. think that is uh, such an important, even like you said, if it's just adding an, another person, another mm-hmm. person who has a different type of energy, you add that energy. And so that that can help your different areas grow where you already had the strengths, but you just didn't have the time or mm-hmm. the aspect or the will. Um, Let's talk about the power of the tongue. Mm-hmm. I think you kind of, you meant, you did mention that. And I kind of, you went into that. <laughs> and I think it's so important. And so how men, how we talk to men, you know, how we talk to each other, mm-hmm. um, how we speak things into existence. Like, what are your thoughts on that? Like, is that important? The power of the tongue. <sighs> Sips drink. <laughs> Sips drink. Hold on, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um, so... I think you have the we have the power to speak life or death into mm-hmm. a person. Yeah. I have seen people being teared down and it's not only in that moment, but you can see them take that, take mm-hmm. those words mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. A, another space and you see them slowly diminish, right? Mm-hmm. Right. And so I think and it's not just do it to be do it. That's not the power of the tongue. Mm-hmm. Like it's it's if you really see something in somebody, right? Like you need to tell them. You need to give them a compliment. Mm-hmm. You need to let them know how well they're doing. Mm-hmm. But especially our men, I want to say because society outside of these walls, outside of like our homes, like it is designed to tear them down mm-hmm. right? right so i love how somebody told you like hey in case you didn't know this is your superpower mm-hmm. you have to be able to speak over your son you have to be able to speak over your husband because it's so important yeah. <laughs> sorry it's okay. no, you're fine but you know <laughs> what i used i wasn't always like this right because i do come from a group of um I have a lot of aunts and uncles, but mainly the women in the family. And Lord, they're going to hear this and they're going to be ready to get me, but it's okay. Right. <laughs> but they like, they curse a lot. You know, mm-hmm. it's a lot of like drama. It's a lot of, t- it's like train to go like real quick. Boop, 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 boop. Mm-hmm. Like I make a phone call right now. It's like 30 of them showing up. Ooh. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it's like, that's where I come from. And so like my reaction would always be going to 10 real quick. Mm -hmm. But in that moment, when the lady spoke to me about the power of my tongue, it really started to shape the way I see things. It started to shape my prayers. It started to shape Mm -hmm. my desires. It started to shape what I really wanted my life to be like. And when I started, I started to do it on me first. Right. Um, Saying the things that I wanted to hear about me, how I wanted to feel and, you know, what I wanted my life to be like. And sometimes you have to be careful, which, you know, when you say things, you because say God will be like, oh, you want this? Right. Okay, I got to remove A, B, and C mm-hmm, from you because yeah. this is what you asked for. Mm-hmm. And I think by me changing that, it really helped me to really be able to, like, pour into mm-hmm. my son. Mm-hmm. So, like, we do affirmations because I think for me is important for him to know that he is a black king, mm-hmm. okay? No matter what room you go in, you are a black king. And when he goes places, people like mispronounce his name. He's like, oh no, I'm Mozzie. No. Yes. Yeah, same And I'll be like, same yeah, here. okay. <laughs> so I get really excited and because, you know, and I always tell him, you know, because it's so hard and I see, and I sometimes I see it in him with his confidence where, you know, kids, you know, because kids are just naturally mean, right? They're kids. But, you know, i I find myself saying I have to change the way that I speak because I want him to feel I want him to feel a certain way all the time. Mm. You know, not saying that he won't have any emotions or yeah. he won't be upset, mm-hmm. but I want him to know that he's a king that wherever he walks there is favor that whatever door that he opens that he is worthy of whatever is in the room, mm-hmm. right? And I think if we start going from that mind frame and what I started doing, girl, it started like changing yeah. like everything. But yeah. I want to point out, look at the power of that lady's tongue. Mm-hmm. How she changed you. How she changed her son, yeah. your son. Mm-hmm. How she probably changed your son, your son's children when he has children way right. in the future. Right, way in you know future what I'm saying? Or <laughs> even the people, <laughs> even whoever else is in their <laughs> orbit. Yeah. I feel like that's a perfect yeah. example of the power of the tone. Last question: um, Is there a woman that you look up to that you follow? Um, for her business acumen, for her, how she conduct herself, or even if it's not, I want to name this person, what quality in that woman makes you say, like, yeah, that's something that I need to tap into. That's something that I need to follow. Okay, so um, she's local, and she's always kind of been like a mentor to me. Her name is Corinne um, Bowman. She's the only owner of KU Real Estate Group, and she also is the owner of Christ Saves Hearts. That's her nonprofit organization. And what I love about her is that not only is she a boss Mm -hmm. about her money, about her real estate, about investment properties, about just it's like she's an incredible wife 
Mm. She's an incredible mother. She's an, an incredible friend. And she juggles it all. And it's hard, right? Because it's hard for anybody to juggle it. But to see the grace that she has and to see, like, just how when she enters the room, it's like you know that she's there. Like, you mm. might not even, like, I've been in a, been yeah. in rooms before and she's entered. And I didn't even know she entered. But I'm like, Corinne must be in here somewhere. Like, I just, <laughs> like her, you, you can right. feel her spirit. But Corinne is in there. And yeah. how she's really, like, built herself from growing up. Yeah. And, um, you know, and I think she's one of the, she's probably, Probably like the first black owned, um, I, I forget what they call it, but kind of like a branch off of Keller Williams. Mm -hmm. And it's just like killing it. And even though like I'm not in real estate and, you know, that's not what I do. Yeah. Um, I probably should be because I can sell anything. But, um, <laughs> I just think that just how she just has like just how she just. It's just her walk, yeah. her talk, you know, just everything about her. Sometimes you can't explain her. it. Like, mm -hmm. I just, you like, I love it. it. And I think, like, and I always tell her, you should do, like, some kind of mentorship programs because you really built yourself from the ground up, like, you know, with God putting first. And just mm -hmm. the things that have has happened to her in her life, like losing mm -hmm. her, um, her first husband, you know, to, I think, cardiac arrest. But she was, she's just, like... She's just an oh. amazing woman and a boss. And I'm like, ooh. And she I has good feminine it. energy. Mm -hmm. So, because, you know, sometimes we can be a boss either. and, you know, yeah. you, you a little point. masculine over there. <laughs> but I just love That's that about point. her. Mm -hmm. Yeah. See, one of the biggest things for me when it comes to a female that I want to look at as a role model is saying what you mean and meaning what you say. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, a woman that stands on her word. Mm -hmm. So, for example, there's a business venture that I want to go do. And you do it. Like, you got to stop saying so many things you want to work on and you want to try to venture out to, mm -hmm. but you're doing no work behind it. Mm -hmm. So any woman that is big on, I have a plan. It may take me a little while, longer than I may intend it to take, but I'm going to do it. I At the end that. of the day, it's the job going to get done. I love that. I love that because I need a woman that can show me I struggled. It took me a little longer than my plan date, my launch date. But I still got it done. Mm -hmm. That speaks volumes to me because I felt like for me, it took forever. And I was just like, Lord, what am I not doing? Yeah. It's taking so long. It and I got to a point me? of I had to be learned what patience is. Mm. Patience is key. There was something that God wanted me to learn that I wasn't learning yet. Mm -hmm. So seeing somebody that can take the time and say it took me a, a little extra step. Mm -hmm. I'm here for it. Yeah, mm -hmm. I love it. I have so many women to name. <laughs> I would love to share all their stories, but we'd be here all day. You said this was the last question. Um, but I'm happy to share their names, you know. So um, if anybody is is looking um, to see a bit of the work that they're doing. But um, first and foremost, uh, Barb, Big Barb, my mom. Um, <laughs> other mentors include Marla Bullock, um, oh. Dr. Tiffany Wiggins, Dr. Mm. Felicia Commodore, Tony Tanner Scott, mm -hmm. um, Dravina Costin. Um, just so many women, soon to be Dr. Kendra Woodfolk, okay. um, just so many people that I've been blessed to have as mentors, um, mm -hmm. especially Dr. Tiffany Wiggins, who has helped me to shift the way that I think about mentorship, especially mm -hmm. um, as it pertains to black women's experience of mentorship. Um, so many more women yeah. uh, that I watch from afar. And I love that you have that many examples. Mm -hmm. right. Few. I love it. Right. And they show up in so many different ways, yeah. so many varied ways. Um, but, you know, outside of God, there to whom I would attribute much of my success. Mm, yeah. That's good. Um, that is good. I want to give a toast because my woman, my women that I look up to is all you guys. Um, I have, I never, I never, when I pick people to be on the women's podcast, I never do it to big myself up. I'm always looking at people who I can aspire to be like, I can aspire to grow um, to love on people, to, you know, fashion, whatever. And I feel like you ladies are it. Um, like, again, this uh, episode is sponsored by 712 Vodka. I think um, the sophistication of 712 Vodka is um, you ladies, the same thing. And so um, please, uh, let me give you a toast to you guys. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. Thank you guys for coming here. Thank you for traveling. Uh, thank you for doing everything that you had to do to be here. And so definitely want to end with gratitude. Thank you guys so much. Thank, thank you. you. Cheers. 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 For my brothers never had an ear to hear me. These the bricks for our sisters help us build it. If I could be a black fly on the wall, I can hear and see it all and have the mind of a god. Black, 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 black. Fly, 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 fly. Black, black, black.